Many a Formula 1 fan will remember the three new teams of 2010, Lotus, Virgin and HRT. They came and went in a flash, with minimal success, proving how difficult Formula 1 can be for startup teams. What some may not remember is that there was a fourth team, whose time in Formula 1 was over before it even began. This is the very short story of USF1. In early 2009, the FIA announced that they were expanding the size of the Formula 1 grid in 2010 to 13 teams, allowing three new entries to compete. On February 24th of that year, American motorsport engineer Ken Anderson and British journalist Peter Windsor appeared on American sports channel Speed and announced that they had lodged an entry back in December, before this announcement, and formed a team called USF1. Ken Anderson had had extensive experience as an engineer in Formula 1, Motocross, IndyCar and NASCAR, having served as the technical director for Stuart Haas Racing, and also designed the Windshear Wind Tunnel, used by numerous NASCAR and IndyCar teams. And Peter Windsor was a familiar face in the Formula 1 paddock, who had been sponsorship manager at Williams in the 1980s, and was also involved in the car accident that left Frank Williams tetraplegic, and had also done TV work with News Corp, Fox, Sky Sports, ABC and Speed, and been the driver press conference moderator. USF1 was to be the first American Formula 1 team since Haas Loder in 1986, and rather uniquely intended to have their main base of operations in the United States instead of Europe. They moved into their headquarters in Charlotte, North Carolina on March 15th, which had once been the base for NASCAR Team Hall of Fame Racing, situated right in the heart of America's motorsport valley. Initially, the FIA proposed a budget cap for 2010 of as little as $50 million. However, when almost all the established teams, all members of the Formula 1 Teams Association, threatened to withdraw from the sport and create a breakaway series, the FIA scrapped this and instead proposed that the established teams provide technical support to the three new teams. On June 12th, USF1's entry was approved, and they appeared on the official entry list for 2010, alongside fellow new teams Campos Meta 1 and Mana Grand Prix, all three of which were to use Cosworth engines. The delays from the disputes meant Ken Anderson didn't sign the Concord Agreement until July 29th, which had delayed the team's preparations by about four months. Nonetheless, three days later they announced that former director of motorsports at Cosworth, Bernard Ferguson, had joined the team as lead engine consultant, and three weeks after that, co-founder and CEO of YouTube, Chad Hurley, joined the team as their primary investor. In September, USF1 joined the Formula 1 Teams Association, and the first renditions of their car, the USF1 Type 1, were revealed, which as well as the Cosworth engine was to feature in-house gearboxes produced by Emco Gears Incorporated, but at this stage only the tub was finished. In October, they announced that they had established a European base at Motorland Aragon in Spain, and that they had recruited Williams, Brabham, Stewart and Red Bull veteran Dave Stubbs as a European operations manager. As the winter approached, they had one factory, with a second under construction, all their major staff, a car in development, but they still had no drivers. Peter Windsor had said that they wanted an all-American lineup and would not accept pay drivers, having expressed interest in drivers such as Alexander Rossi, Joseph Newgarten, Connor Daly and Danica Patrick. They eventually reneged on this, however, and in November, Argentine driver Jose Maria Lopez announced that he had a conditional seat with the team, provided he was able to secure $8 million in sponsorship. Fellow countryman, former F1 driver and senior Argentine politician Carlos Reutemann eventually got the funds together, and Lopez's seat was confirmed on January 25th, 2010. Things from here on, however, were starting to unravel. During Lopez's announcement, Argentine media claimed that Honda's former test driver James Rossiter had also signed with the team and would also be providing $8 million of sponsorship. However, at this stage, despite everything at a glance having fallen into place, the car was still barely off the drawing board, whereas every other team except for fellow new team Campos Meta 1, who were having their own problems, had built their car, signed all of their drivers, and were preparing to go to the first pre-season test in Jerez. So in early February, Rossiter and his backers withdrew from the deal. USF1 missed the first two pre-season tests, and on February 18th made their final tweet from their official Twitter account, explaining that their web servers were down and that they hoped to have them up again soon. Two days later, the team asked for permission to miss the first four races and make their debut at the Spanish Grand Prix in May. Three days after this, they then lost a potential sponsorship deal with Swiss financial services group Lockstein. At this time, an anonymous whistleblower from within the team revealed that pretty much all faith in Ken Anderson and Peter Windsor from the staff had been lost, with delayed paychecks and an inefficient management structure massively stalling car development, meaning that 10 of the 70 staff at the Charlotte base had already left, and the remaining staff had turned their support towards Chad Hurley, 
who tried and failed against Anderson and Windsor's wishes to create a merger with Zoran Stefanovic's Stefan Grand Prix, who despite being one of the rejected applicants for 2010, was still attempting to build a car and turn up to the races. Lopez's team then withdrew from his contract, and he approached Campos Meta 1, now renamed Hispania Racing Team, to try and get a seat with them. On February 28th, the team asked to defer completely to 2011, but by now the jig was up, and on March 2nd they ceased operations and the factory was shut down. Two days later, Hispania launched their car, just in time for the first race in Bahrain, and announced Bruno Senna and Karun Chandok as their two drivers, leaving Lopez without a drive. At this point, despite throwing the towel in on 2010, they intended to try again in 2011, but only a month later they folded completely, having ran out of money and put their assets up for auction, including a pair of trailers they bought off Braun GP. Six weeks later, Chad Hurley's advisor Paris Mullins announced he was intending to form a new American team for 2011 from the remnants of USF1, but without Anderson or Windsor's involvement, which would be called Cypher. However, this was quickly stopped in its tracks, as in June, the World Motorsport Council conducted an inquiry into USF1's failure to compete in 2010, and for bringing the FIA into disrepute, they were fined $309,000 and barred from taking part in any future FIA-sanctioned events. Jose Maria Lopez never made it into Formula 1, but went on to become a three-time World Touring Car Champion and a two-time WEC Champion and one-time winner of the 24 Hours of Le Mans. James Rossiter spent two years as Force India's test driver and also competed in Super Formula, Super GT, the WEC and as a reserve driver for Tachita in Formula E, who Dave Stubbs became team principal of in 2016. Peter Windsor returned to his journalism and punditry work, which he continues to do to this day, and Ken Anderson works as a freelance motorsport engineer. Early in the formation of the team, Anderson approached his former boss Gene Haas, who owned the windshear wind tunnel Anderson had designed, to offer him a leadership role within the team. He declined, but four years later decided to form his own American team, who did make it onto the grid, and despite their ups and downs, are still competing to this day, but are yet to field an American driver. That's all for this video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at brook underscore f1. A huge shout out and thank you as ever to my Patreon subscribers Alex Vorstermans, Ypsilon2643 and Valentin Frank, and I'll see you all next time.